I find myself thinking about you. Your memories keep me. Hello, and thank you for tuning in to the High Garden Podcast. Today's guest is a special gentleman, activist, bartender, community leader. I want to welcome to the show Cameron Mitchell. Appreciate you, TJ. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming down. Uh, you have a really good, like, voice in the community. A lot of people who, uh, you know, are down with the movement of Black Lives Matter, LGBTQ, they really look up to you. So I wanted to have you on the show and, you know, give us some of your insight. Appreciate the opportunity. You yeah, know. man. You know, just here to, here to speak a little truth to power. Hell yeah. So as of right now, where are you living? What are you working on? What are your new projects that, you know, that you're, you got so, moving? I'm still in the square. Um, actually. King of the square, actually. Yeah, uh, <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't say that, you know. I had, I had a fun run. I had a good run. Mm -hmm. But, uh, no, I'm actually uh, back with my folks. I moved back in. Um, I was living with my girlfriend. We broke up. And I was like, fuck it. Corona. Shit's yeah. wild. Might as, well, hey, might as well get a fresh start. And there's it. nothing wrong with going home. No. Never especially, is. especially during the pandemic. And, like, guess what? I don't have to pay for shit. <laughs> okay. Free dinners, baby. Free rent. Free dinners, free rent. Oh, it's great. Oh, it's yeah. great. Hey, That's if, dope. You, if you got it, flaunt it, guys. Get it. For sure, dude. Uh, any projects you're working on? Uh, in, in Akron, I heard that you're in charge of all these Black Lives Matter signs. Like, you really helped out with that. And you guys are doing, like, pens now? So uh, oh, we have patches. Patches, we have patches yeah, right now. Um, What's a patch? Do you just like slap it on there? No, no. So they're like patches. Like said, this denim I got on, like legit. You wanted to like sew your shit in, have a patch. Like yeah, because oh, so people they put patches on stuff, hats, okay. denim. You know, oh, yeah. some really cool shit. But let people know that you're really out here and you believe in this Black Lives Matter shit. Really wear it on your back, like put it on your chest. Do what the fuck you need to do. Yeah, let that's dope, know. dude. Uh, what is it? It's just like the symbols. No, 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 it actually says Black Lives Matter on a, on a black canvas. It was, uh, I had a bunch of, so, see I'm wearing these black Levi's right now, right? Mm -hmm. I love black Levi's. Yeah, and yeah. I, had, I had, had a lot of pairs that I blew out, like blew the crotch out. I'm just wor working a lot. Life, you know, yeah. Doing stuff. Life, yeah. So uh, we used a lot of that canvas, and uh, we got uh, our homie, our homie uh, Foxy Neptune. Hey. That's what, yeah, that's her at. Hey, shout out that's Milk. That's her at. Yeah, Milk Money. You know what it is. I ain't going to drop her government. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, she came up with um, the uh, actual press for it. Like uh, AJ, uh, my ex, mm -hmm. she, uh, she was actually the one who really started getting these Black Lives Matter signs really out and distributed through the square. Yeah. And especially around Akron because you drive around, you see them fucking Everywhere. It's it's not only that you see the Black Lives Matter signs; it's the same one too. Yeah, like it all came from the same source. Yeah, we uh, there was like she came with ideas. She's like, I, I need to do something to get back. I want to do something, and uh, my dude Nate, who uh, he's like he works at like a screen printing mm -hmm. shop, whatever. Okay, so that's what you meant when you meant pressing. So you guys are like putting the shirt on there and like pressing it with the well. With the wet he stuff. he has he has the capabilities to do that, mm -hmm. but. What well, we needed for him, like they also do like yard signs and like uh, okay, having there metal rigs. That's the things same, I see. Same okay. guy, but he does shirts like that too. Don't oh, worry, man. He, we, yeah, you got to know people. You know people in the square. You got somebody <laughs> for everybody, man. It's Dang, great. Dang, dude. But uh, they linked up and he gave us a quote, gave us a price. He just, And he was also like, I'm about this too. I'll match half. So it was like, what I got put in, he matched half. Like, Nate, Nate's a good fucking dude. And, um, we got a bunch of the boards. We got all the little, the, the little, um, the metal stakes. Signs. Yeah, stakes. the stakes. There we go. And uh, it was like, shit, I stole a fucking, uh, <laughs> I stole a stool from Thursdays because it's tall enough. Because when you're spray painting, and it's like you, you can't be leaning over in something like it's a small surface yeah. because your back is your back's gonna be gonna trash. Be yeah. And if you're doing, like, I think all together, they were, uh, I think it was like 450 signs made. Shh. Yeah. Jeez. 450 signs Handmade. made. Yeah, handmade, handmade. Uh, Dude, that rocks. Man. I was I was probably only responsible for maybe like fifty, but uh, hey, that's something. No, that's but, more uh, than forty nine. But AJ, no, she really, she really put uh, her money where the mouth was, and she really, uh, she really, she did some good she shit. She put on for she it. Did. Dude, that's she did. That's dope. Where was she selling them? Like, where were where were they? Where were you able to purchase these signs? So, they weren't for purchase. That's oh. the other thing. Oh, yeah. They were on don on a donation base. Mm -hmm. So when we first started. Each sign came with like a little 
postcard. Like, these are some local organizations to mm-hmm. donate to. Yeah. Like, but people, they're lazy as fuck. They ain't trying to do that shit. So, it's like, yo, here's this cash. Like, I got five on it. I got ten, whatever. And it was, like, we just had a fucking just lot of cash from all these people. But the really cool thing with all this cash is it all got donated. Yeah. We donated to the... Didn't you say NAACP? Yeah, the acronym. In, Akron NAACP. The Akron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Akron chapter, you know, we got to A. Gotta, yeah, a. dude. Got to take care and respect the Dirty 330. Mm-hmm. You know what it is. That's cool, dude. But, um, yeah, it was something like, uh, I think it was like $759 or something like that. Yeah. That's sweet. That's, yeah. That's super dope. And um, like the thing with these patches, like, get the cash when I start moving those, because I'm going to do this after the election, because I need people to know, like, this just wasn't a no, thing. No, yeah, it's like, not a is, phase. This is this like is, this is on. Like, yeah, we should is, keep we pushing this. Mm-hmm. So after this podcast, I'm gonna post those, post them on Instagram. Yeah, I actually I'm gonna link up right now. Uh, Twitter is Collective Mind P, and uh, my Instagram is Collective Mind Project. Oh, okay. So hit those ads, and you'll be able to uh, look at those signs. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, you gotta you gotta get that follow if you, you ain't got no pictures. Hey, you ain't hey, if shit. you ain't following, you ain't getting nah, nothing. I heard yeah, that. trust me, you got more than ten pictures. You're a fucking bot. Or you're goddamn <laughs> fed. I got time for that. Got that? Hell yeah. But um, yeah, there, a lot of good work came out of that, and it's it's really cool when you do drive around the city and you do get to see those signs because you know how much time and effort and yeah, legit passion went. And especially them. in the Highland Square area where they're yeah. you know, where they're mostly at. Like your, I want to say it's your street. I don't know what street you're on. Charlotte Street. Charlotte Street. Yeah, when I was still in Charlotte, uh, yeah, I think like every house on that street, except for like maybe like four, mm-hmm. me had and, a sign in the front. Me and a buddy Pablo, we were driving together and we drove down Charlotte, and there were so many Black Lives Sign Matter, like so many Black Lives Matter signs that we literally turned around. And we said we got to drive down yeah. again. Yeah. Like it was like okay, someone really cared about us on this whole street. That's dope. Legit. Every night I got home, she was already doing stuff. She was already had the stencils out. It's dope, painting. man. Then I uh, came through to help out. One of our neighbors down the street, Courtney, she came down and helped out, made a few signs. It, it was a really cool community effort. The community because, like, effort. Everybody in the street, especially Charlotte Street, actually shout out to Charlotte Street, Highland Square, the one of the best streets in the square. Everyone's actually cool on that street. They all know each other. It's like an actual neighborhood. It's a community. You can actually, like, I kid you not, things I thought were silly growing up, like, you see, like, oh, Knocking someone knocking the door on the TV like, hey, you got a cup of sugar? You could actually do that on that street. And this is in that urban area. Mm-hmm. It was like legit. Everyone knew who each other were. Do that and rocks. everyone actually appreciated and cared about one another. And that was like one of the more beautiful, cool things I could see being in the city. And I've been here most of my life. And mm-hmm. I love it. When you see things like that, it's like, nah, man. Like, we're, we're a great place. We got cool shit going on. Yeah, uh as communities goes, there's nothing really like Highland Square area. No. When you see the porch nothing. rocker and everything is shut down, you see everyone out going to the different houses to watch the you know watch the shows. You're like, wait, this is literally the best community in Ohio. It's Highland Square. It's hands down. It's it's the best. It's got the tightest LGBTQ community, people who truly care about yeah. you know the BLM movement, and it's it's the best. Legit for like the size of what it is. Like, <laughs> if you had to, like, grade it on uh, fun for square mile or like, or, like, respect and equality for square mile, absolutely. Yeah, Highland Square. Oh, yeah. Highland Square, yeah, absolutely. Hands Put down. It, I'm putting that top top fucking two in, this, in the fucking state. In the state. It dude, is one rocks. of the most beautiful places mm-hmm. in our entire state, and it's right here in Akron. That's and dope, that's something dude. that I think everyone should be proud of. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm, I'm extremely proud of Akron and Highland Square. Obviously, we got the king and... But it's truly Highland Square is the place to be. So moving on forward, what was... Uh, Shit, that's why you got Tangier becoming a gym uh, for everybody hey, in Highland Square. That's going to be Highland, dope, dude. Highland Square is about to become Montrose. It's about yeah. to be sick. The new Montrose, Except Highland Square. LeBron Montrose. <laughs> hey, dude, that's dope. That's super dope. So, you know, with the whole corona situation going on, where were you, like, when COVID first hit? There's, like, a story that you were, like, stuck overseas, like... Yeah. Um, that sounds absolutely scary. Uh, it, was, it, it was a trip, literally and figuratively. Um, so, AJ and I. What month? So, you, what month were you? March. This March. Is March. This Ma- is March. When? This is, this is March, uh, what? 11th? Mm-hmm. Yeah, March 11th, I think, is when we flew out because the whole game plan was to go to Ireland, 
do St. Patrick's Day in Dublin. Mm -hmm. Go to Bray, which is like a coastal town in Dublin. Do their fucking week long thing, and like have a good time. Like do do St. Patrick's Day. Visit Guinness. Yeah, absolutely. You know wonderful. what I'm saying? Do some sightseeing. Hell yeah, that's dope. I, no, I, yeah, Guinness is great, but I, I, yeah, I'll get there. Like Guinness is uh, the the architecture is so cool, the history is so cool, the beer is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Guinness does taste different over there. Yeah. It really does serve room temp, and yeah, it makes dope. a little bit difference. That's a big dope, dude. But, uh, well, um, so you you fly over there for vacation with your significant other. Yeah. The first day, I guess, like, oh, we're at the bar. We're going to see Guinness, the oh. man himself. This is dope. Nah, well, even before <laughs> that, man, uh, just, like, on the flight, like, we took off at, uh, at like, 9 o'clock. PM or AM. And they had fucking Trump and Pence. Like, we, and we had Wi-Fi on the plane. It's international. They gotta, you got to have Wi-Fi. At, like, 9, 11 p.m. And mm-hmm. we just took off at 9 o'clock. They announced a travel ban. <laughs> Because COVID. You're on the plane. We're, we're in the air. We're you're over in the, the Atlantic. Air. We're in we're over the Atlantic. Okay, so you're in the airplane, people are going <gasps> Yeah. Oh, oh yes. <gasps> yeah. Oh absolutely. Oh, um geez. Yeah, because everyone's like, wait, what what does that mean? Like what like what? Do we're we, we got a travel ban. Like are we not allowed to come back? Like we were Dang stuck. Dude. So off off rip. Oh. Off rip. We uh we kinda knew This is gonna be awkward. Yes, it was gonna be a, a, a <laughs> different different vacation. <laughs> And uh, when we first got there, it was everything seemed somewhat normal. I can't say completely normal because uh, we flew into Dublin International. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a big airport, huge airport. And you got we, off the plane. And we got off the plane, and you walk off the plane to the airport, and it's a ghost town. Oh no! It's quiet. Oh, you, you can hear your suitcase. You could hear your own footsteps every <laughs> step you oh, took. Oh no, dude! Yes. No. And the thing that I was impressed by and mm-hmm. that really um, it really made me understand, like, okay, there are places that do take this seriously, especially in hindsight now. Mm-hmm. When you got the plane, they have signs everywhere talking about, hey, make sure you social distance. Make sure you're washing your hands. Like, at least for 20 oh, this, seconds. This is, this, and this is, this is, this the, is this three is the, hours after the travel ban. Yeah, and this is, and this is so... Well, we're in Ireland now, so that flight is uh, oof, like it's like Long four time. and a half. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like four and a half, almost five. So, um, and there's a, I want to say it's a six-hour difference, six-hour time difference. Mm-hmm. But this is still the 11, or maybe it's the 12th now. But uh, they already had stuff up, like, hey, there's this very contagious virus going around. Be safe. Be safe. Like practice social this. distance. Mm-hmm. Practice. Practice. Like good hygiene. If Dang, you feel, if you dude. feel sick. Like you feel something's wrong, like like you're if you're you feel like you have a fever or you have like you have a weird cough, like mm-hmm. stay home. Like for legit. sure. Immediately when we got there, the signs like, okay, like they understand this is this is an issue, but it wasn't anything too crazy. Yeah, and just like honestly being like a little bit American and a little bit stupid, you'd be like, you know, how serious can this be? You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's where I was at at first, like, okay, are you are you kidding? Like yeah. how serious can this be? But at this point, it was it was like that there too because mm-hmm. it had just hit that island. Like uh, the only country that was like really going through at that point in time in Europe was uh, was Italy. Mm-hmm. Italy, like yeah, they, I remember, they were the one. They were like the first to be like, dude, they're getting destroyed. Yeah. Jeez, just man. To the mic, sorry. No, you're all good. <laughs> so, so obviously, you take off on the plane. Eleven minutes into your flight, the travel ban starts. Yep. You know, you get off the plane, and it's literally a ghost town in the airport. I mean, what kind of vacation is this setting up to be, man? I'd be pretty nervous, <laughs> dude. I'd be uh, like, yo, like, we really about to be, we stuck, dog. They said travel we, ban. We, we, from when we got off, we were already trying to figure out what we could do in case we did get stranded. And <laughs> Yeah, no, that's a yeah, real that's thing. real, dog. Because, like. What's the what's the cheapest like, Airbnb for a month? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what's it? Those were those were legit. Everything was on the table. Mm-hmm. Cause uh, shit, man. I think between the two of us, we took like thirty two hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. So it was like cool. Like we knew for a week. Like oh, it's thirty two hundred for two people. Oh, it's about to be lit. Yeah, it's to be chill. Yeah, kicked it. Hey, we rich. Try, dude, well, <laughs> hey, I'm rich. I'll tell you what. Only vacation I ever went on where I left with way more money than I ever anticipated. I'm like, oh, should I came back like this? I'd 
I got two G's still in the bag. What's up? <laughs> Hell Bro. yeah, dude. So what was it like compared to being like, uh, you told me a little bit about your travels, being in like Dublin, the big cities, as opposed to, you know, driving away oh, yeah. to where, yeah. you know, shit, you might not find a gas station. So they never seen you before. They never seen your Dublin. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest city in mm-hmm. Ireland. That's where like the majority of their population lives. I think they've got like two million people who live there, or Not just bad. under two million. Mm-hmm. Whole population of Ireland is like four point four million people. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's a tiny little island, but most people they do live in the city of Dublin, and um, that's one of the cool things about the Guinness Guinness factory. They employ so many people. Yeah, I heard like Guinness is like what funds ireland like their biggest yeah. cash crop their yeah. biggest like yeah they've got like a five thousand year lease on their on their property <laughs> oh, like no. how like what like what does that even Yo. mean it's literally built into the floor but they have a five thousand year lease does that mean that for five thousand years they ain't got to pay rent or like i think yeah okay. yeah hey. essentially hey. like uh when you put on for the whole country yeah say. pretty much <laughs> pretty pretty much oh yeah dude but yeah, um, <laughs> so it was cool. So, for example, leaving um, the big cities to go to the countryside, were people wearing masks? Did they even know what was going on? Masks, the mask thing wasn't a thing yet. Oh, this, yeah, is still, this, is this is still early. This is still early. This is still early. Yeah, like this is still in March. Like yeah. the mask thing didn't become a thing until what? Uh, like April, May, because yeah. they at first they were like, "Oh, we're not sure if people need to wear masks. Maybe more dangerous and shit." And there was like a shortage. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, and they're in the being, but it's like you can hey get a bandana and you yeah. got a whole cloth and rest around your fucking face. Yeah, just do something. But um, so Dublin, beautiful city, gorgeous city, big city. A lot of traffic, a lot of narrow roads. Whoa. Europe is very were they nice to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Every, yeah. oh, so one of the things. When you do travel overseas, especially you go to Europe, they can always tell you're an American okay. every single time. Because I'm fresh, you know, the hair, no. the shoes. Uh, uh, how do they no, know no, I'm no. American? Then? We, uh, we do something that apparently a lot of people don't do, and I didn't know this until I was told. Mm-hmm. We smile. We smile at strangers. That's not something people do elsewhere. It's not a thing. Okay. It's a, that's a, like an American exclusive thing. And super Ohio thing, too. And I, no, I think it's a thing across the states. Okay. Because, uh, spe- like, you go to the south, like, especially, like, man, I love. You're right. You're love, right. love. Yeah, Southern hospitality is real. Mm-hmm. Like, someone, south is cool, like, because if you're someone they feel comfortable, they like, I'm like, yo, it's legit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got people down there, I'm like, yo, fuck you, bro. And you got people like that up here, so I was like, it ain't that different. But down there, you're like, you know, you know where you're going. You're going to see some shit. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, everyone's beyond, beyond nice and just really, really, really beautiful. And Hell like yeah. the Southern hospitality thing is real. It's very real. Mm-hmm. Ireland, the exact same situation because these people, like, they, they got to see two young Americans and. Like, as soon as you walk into the place, they know. They just know. They know. They know. They know. <laughs> it's so crazy. But strangers come up and start talking to you. Yeah. It's like, oh, you smile at a stranger. Well, guess what? You invite this conversation. Yeah. Like, like, oh, shit. That's, I guess, that is what that means. Mm-hmm. And we met a lot of really cool people. Um, a, lot of, a lot of older gentlemen just hanging out, drinking at the pubs. Old dudes, old mm-hmm. drunk dudes love to chat. They, yeah, they love right. it. They love it. Yeah, to have a good conversation. I mean, you're a bartender, so you know yeah, about that. You not, know, a, not a hang. How it's like, it's it's more of a social thing when you're really drinking. Yes. You know? Yes. It's a... Except it's... No, it's a drinking thing. Okay, there, yeah, it's a little bit of both. You're right. You're definitely I, right. When uh, when we were in Doolin, which is on the West Coast, man, we watched this guy get wasted. And he's with his son. His son is like... Uh, he's like maybe two years younger than us. So he's like mm-hmm. 20, 26, 27. And this dude is... His dad is wasted, and he's sitting in his chair, and he falls out of his chair, like, hits his head in the fucking floor, and it's, like, out, out cold, probably, it's, like, 10, 15 minutes. This kid's trying to get him up, like, waking him up. Eventually, he comes to, comes to his kids, and, like, you all right? Yeah, I'm good. Gets up, orders two pints for him and his son. They ate him, like, all right, cool. And we legit, we all just watch this man just fall <laughs> okay. out. Okay. They got hit different his, rules hit. there. You can be- <laughs> If you can get back up. And you can order a drink. You're not fighting nobody. You're good. You're good. That's the good. Drinking culture in Europe is completely different. Like being in a hooligan, it's like accepted as long as you're not hurting anyone. Yeah. It's like as long as you're not like Whoa. legit trying to fight someone or like 
Disturbed. Bully someone did. Disturbed. Yeah. Like, well, no, you, they're 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 obnoxious as shit. I mean, they're mm -hmm. wasted, but but uh, it, it's a very different culture. Hey, this dude in the game, that's a bottle of moonshine. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's that's how we know this dude was super drunk. <laughs> yeah, he went to his car. If he talked to this dude for like him and his son for like maybe two hours, and this they dude, said, I got like, some. I got a parting gift for you. I got some. And he gave us a fucking bottle of moonshine, which they call poutine. In there was it was it clear brown clear. No. Okay, shit. Yeah. You got some real Irish moonshine yeah. oh. from Guinness himself. <laughs> Dang, <laughs> dog. That's dope. Oh, no. Oh, I for, super dope, I man. I forget what that dude's first name was, but. We hey, had to, shout out my mans. Well, the thing that was crazy, we had the same last name. That's when we ended up kicking with that dude for so long. Wow, you have an Irish last name, Cameron. It's. Uh, <laughs> it's not oh. Irish. It's not Irish. It's Scottish. Scottish. But. And it's Mitchell's and yeah, the Isles. They're not that fucking big. Mother people fuck. Hell yeah. So you went on vacation during the travel ban. Seconds after it began. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Seconds yep. later. Good time. Uh, what was it like? How they let you get home? Did you need to go to like an embassy and do testing? Did so, they make you quarantine when you got home? Like So we did call the embassy and they did give us a heads up on what that was supposed to be like. We were told we were gonna get tested off the plane. They didn't they didn't do that. They didn't do that at all. So you get on a plane, are they saying like social distance on the plane? No, are people freaking out? Our plane out? was packed. Ooh. Our plane was packed. Everyone wanted to get home. There were more people on the plane than when we flew there initially. So Damn. we were on a, I think we were on a, what, a 787? And I think that's like 400 some odd people. Mm hmm. Packed. Packed. And this is the thing, like, you would hear, you would hear somebody cough. Oh, and man. it was just like, everybody just. Yo, if you cough during this, yeah, now if you cough, you are a villain. Yes. Like, yes. you're a bad guy. Yes. You got to hold that shit in, dog. <laughs> <laughs> you got to hold it in, man. Especially if you about to, like, go into like, a club or something. Yeah. Like, you better hold that shit in. <laughs> but, no, uh, it was that, that was, that was, that was weird. But when we flew back, it was like, we all got our foreheads temperature to make sure we didn't have a fever. A few people, they, they had to go back to the plane, but... It was like you got off, you had to sign some paperwork with the CDC, pretty much saying you wouldn't leave for like two weeks. Oh, so saying that you wouldn't leave your house for two yeah, weeks. Yeah, Whoa, yeah. Whoa, you actually... That, that was a quarantine way back. I did, yeah, we do a quarantine. You had to yeah. sign some real papers with your name. Yes. yes your address. Yes. Damn, yes. dog, that's for real shit. CDC, they were not planned. Yeah, it's but smart. But they also could have done a better job. Mm -hmm. Especially especially what we know now. Yeah, dude. But um, That's insane. So... You left for vacation during the travel ban. You were told that you may not be able to come home because, obviously, we have a, a serious pandemic going on. Yeah. You get home. You have to tell the government and sign papers that you're going to stay in your house for 14 days, like on some real shit, and then George Floyd dies. So, I mean, you literally had, like, a month of insane shit going down to you, yeah. dude. Yeah. Like, where was your head at, man? I mean... Personally, if I was almost stuck overseas, and then the government said, "Yo, ass got to be in the house, and we gonna keep tabs on you," and now this George Floyd stuff's going on, I was honestly personally in like, I was a little bit of a wreck, seeing all the Twitter stuff, getting a little bit of emotional. You know, I'm I'm usually pretty good at being a good like uh, journalist where I can read the information, and you know, not put my emotions into it and just read the facts. But this was definitely hitting pretty hard, man. You get you see a man. You know, pass away on camera. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit heavier when it's it's recorded. You know what I'm saying? No, absolutely. Um, you get to see <laughs> you get to see how cruel humanity can be sometimes. Yeah, over a twenty dollar bill, dog. Yeah, over a fake twenty. Insane. Man, can you imagine being dead because you got a fake twenty? Yeah, that's a mistake. I mean, as a bartender, have you seen a fake 20? Is that all, something that all happens? The fucking time. That's something that happens, right? People print off fake bills on $1 bills all the fucking time, especially around the holidays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be careful. Check your stuff coming up. Holidays. That, that's cash that, that happens <laughs> yeah, every yeah. year. Um, yeah, the whole situation was, was really intense because, like, just coming back from the trip, it was like, uh, like half, half of it was cool. Then the other half was like, oh, shit, they're shutting down. And it's like, can't do anything and we travel all the way across the country and i'm driving on the other side of the road and that's just stressful <laughs> okay. driving a stick on the other side of the road but uh it was like going from a shutdown there then coming back home mm -hmm. and everything is shut down here then 
than just being at home, like, and that and the George Floyd shit happened. And it's like, I just watch this dude beg for his life. Like, li- literally, call out for his mother, who's dead. Mm-hmm. Like, she's dead. When you start screaming for mom, that's next level. When you start screaming for your dead mother that's, to help you? That's next level. Yeah, you, shit, man. You're, you're truly frightened. No, like, frightened to and, the and bone. Thing, and that, that, that man was huge. Huge. And he's calling out for someone to save him who's been dead. Mm-hmm. Like, to comprehend and understand that level of fear because you know the police don't care if you live or die. Insane, like, dude. That's, an, that's a hard thing to comprehend because you know, dude, when it's fear, when you're, when you're at, you know, if you do something extreme, you're in a car accident, you skateboard, you snowboard, when something extreme happens, like, dude, that fear is like nothing else. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. to, to call out for your dead mom is like, dude, that's, a, yeah, like, that's extremely intense. You're a, you're a grown man. You're calling out for your mother who's been gone. Mm-hmm. Like, he probably shit on his way. Like, Jay, who knows? He probably did see her before he passed. He Makes sense. Did. Makes sense. But intense, it, was, it was like everything that happened after that with the protests, the riots, the looting, the whole, the whole situation. It was, it was fucking heartbreaking to see, but at the same time, it was really rewarding mm-hmm. because, uh, and like a man who was trying to buy a pack of cigarettes, a pack of cigarettes, mm-hmm. he died because the clerk called the police because it was a fake twenty word, and the police had complete disregard for his life. Yeah, it's super sad, man. And to find out one of the dudes, he worked with at the fucking club. Mm-hmm. One of the cops. The Y'all cop, homies. Uh, Chauvin, who killed him. Mm-hmm. They worked together. Intense. Like. What kind of world are we living in? That's someone you, you've seen multiple times. You know who that is. And you know what he smells like. You, exactly. Yeah, you guys know what each other eat. And you know what I'm saying? You're going to lay in this man's neck with your knee. Yeah. For eight minutes. Truly disgusting. Truly disgusting. Like, what are you a cop for? What are you, what are you trying to accomplish? And you can hear this story a hundred times, but when you see the video, it's nothing like, you know, you, a thousand words for one picture exactly is how I feel. You know what I'm saying? It, it, I think that that really broke a lot of people. A lot of people, like a lot of Americans. I don't think they, they were to handle that reality. For sure. Like, uh, like, both, both you and I, we're, like, we're black. Like, I'm sure you've had that conversation with your parents growing up. Like, you know, be careful. Don't, don't do this. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. Yes, sir. Talk and to the cop. No, yeah. sir. Talk yeah. to the cop. Well, Respect well, them, you know. Cause... Well, nine. But yeah. seeing that, and especially with a lot of the other police murders that have happened over the past shit. Just to say two years. Even even before that, like the ones, like especially there's so many we've been able to see now, mm-hmm. like so many we've been able to see, like the Philando Castillo one, man, like intense. You're really gonna pull up on dude with his baby moms and his daughter in the back, and you gonna shoot this motherfucker while he's trying to pull his license out? Yeah. What like what you what are you a cop for? You that and, and I'm just saying if you're the if you're the police officer, and you shot a guy, I mean. Wouldn't you like put pressure on it to keep him alive, dog? Like not here, not here, not here. dude. We shoot, like we shoot to kill. Yeah. Even if, even if you feel threatened, that motherfucker was reaching for his wallet. Yeah, that's definitely insane. Like, and I mean, so you're feeling all this type of way. We had COVID. One month later, one month later, we had George Floyd, and if you're from Akron, we had the Kiki Palmer situation. Uh, not Kiki Palmer. What the was Kia Crawford. The Kia Crawford situation where uh, a random bystander was was murdered in cold blood. And this was like the height of everything. You know what I'm saying? Like the George Floyd shit just went down. Now we're hearing about the Kiki situation. And, and I mean, dude, for weeks and months on end, people were standing on that on that corner. Yeah. And um, uh, Every night I drive by to go into my girl's house and there would be a vigil, a bunch of camera, a bunch of candles and homies just chilling there. Yeah, no, um... Dude, insane. Um, yeah, actually, I work at the brewery right in the corner where that happened. 
and uh, I got into work maybe about like 45 minutes after it went down and just the whole mood, the whole environment was just like just dead, just, just just still. It was like you could you could cut just the tension and the fear with a knife. It was like it was like seeing fog or a feeling fog that was just on everyone. Damn. Everyone like we 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 just saw this happen, and that's what I'm saying. I feel like that the George Floyd thing hurt and affected so many people. And when she got murdered, it was like uh, no one knew what the situation was, and it was kind of like this was this a hate crime. Oh, I personally, I immediately. I mean, this was during the yeah. the the George Floyd situation. I was immediately like, "This is a hate crime." Like, yeah, no, a lot of people. We weren't. need the information because I am hurting right now. No, oh. intense man. It was, but like, come to find out, it was a really, really fucked up case of mistaken identity. Someone trying to get revenge and end up killing a innocent young 19 year girl who just graduated from high school so shady with a grandmother in the car mm-hmm. because you, you thought it was someone you you had it out for which is so disgusting it's Gross. so disgusting the woman just takes someone's life just because just because you can just because you felt some sort of way mm-hmm. and it's like to see someone so young like i'm like saying i'm 29 people say i'm so young but to see someone's 10 years younger than me mm-hmm Get murdered outside work. It's like what doesn't what, sit right, dude. No, what what's going on? Like, mm-hmm. as a country, something is fundamentally wrong. Where it's okay, where people feel really you're a position of power, or you're just somebody who has a fucking vengeance. You can just kill someone just because just because you can, because you have the access to do it. Yeah. It's the access for sure. Access doesn't help. It definitely doesn't help at all. But we are so, so willing and just so passionate to go take someone else's life. Yeah. Why? Why? Mm, I have no idea. I can't give you an answer. But on that note, uh, Squire, if you could please... uh Bring in a little taste test. We have two burgers for you to try from two local restaurants. Word. Thank you, sir. So, so uh, I didn't do a blind. I got like I ain't got a blindfold or no shit. There's no blindfold, but if I, you, I know what's what, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> immediately I know what's what. All right, one is a Swenson's Galley Boy and one is a Sky High Burger. Yeah, absolutely. Can you please take a bite of each and tell absolutely. me which one you like more? Absolutely. Just give us a little break, give you a little food, you know, a little food for thought. All right. We'll start, we'll start with the Swensons. We'll start with the Swensons. Deal. Okay. Deal? Cool. Could be warmer. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> I agree with you, but <laughs> could be warmer. I know. Ain't bad. Life, life, life could be worse. Yeah, life could be worse. It some. might be though. So we'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow is election day, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. We will find out who is our president. Prob- probably our president. <laughs> probably. <Fuck. laughs> the fact that there's a question behind it. That's how we all know how stressful and how dire what we're going through as a country is right now. Like, this really feels different. Definitely. Yeah. This isn't just like we're voting, like, you know, like, oh, we're just going to vote. It's a normal mm. day. It's like, yo. No, this is A feels lot of things will different. ride. Mm-hmm. Like, and... And voting this year has been, was definitely a, a way more of, of a, like, a community experience than it's ever really been. I'm talking to everyone I talk to has a four-hour wait in line. Yeah. My family super takes voting serious, so they, like... You know, we get dressed up. My mom gets the camera out. You know, the, we're dancing. We're drinking oh, coffee. Yeah, we're, yo, yo, y'all they're, wilding. They're having a good time. You know what I'm saying? That's that's and, cool. And this year, yeah, <laughs> and this year it was like intense. Like everyone was there. Everyone was high fiving. Like everyone was out. I was like, damn, this makes me. I liked voting this year. You know, it was a good time. Um, yeah, it it was cool to vote. 
But all right. Now we're gonna try the second burger. And it's called a Sky High from Skyway. Yeah, let's get it. Just give it a shot. I'm Got Team it. Skyway, man. Yeah. <laughs> Slice Winston's. I love you, dude. Just look. Look at the difference. <laughs> look how. Look what the fuck is on here. What's on here? I don't know, dude. This was my favorite place to get a burger growing up. Yeah, it's not anymore. Not dude. the same. Not right, we'll the talk same. about this later, Swinsons. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, don't worry. We will. <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, <laughs> the George Floyd thing, I really think that, that changed a lot. Then, um, then shit, you got, you know, like the police station get burned down, which, <laughs> Which I under, I've understood the animosity and the anger, I and mean, I respect that. I get it. Someone who died for no reason. It's like you. If people don't have an actual avenue to really express and actually have justice for what's happened, what do you expect? What do you expect? But the thing that that's really crazy now is that we find out that we actually burn the police station down they're part of the bungalow boys what is that it's a far right extremist group bad guys yeah so this is this is why this is this is where it gets really really scary really scary you have another police involved murder in the same state of wisconsin in kenosha mm-hmm. and i can't remember the gentleman's name who got shot and who's now paralyzed the rest of his life. I also started another wave of riots and protests mm-hmm. and looting. Wasn't that the Wendy's one? No, that was all this. That was still the, um, I think that was still the first, the first one. But mm-hmm. the second one is when we had someone, a teenager, drive from out of state with oh. an assault rifle. Oh, yeah, that was intense. Man. And killed Two people, or was it three? I know it was, it was definitely two. Mm-hmm. Two people did die. Protecting property. And come to find out. Isn't he like underage? He was 17. He was 17. But, but that's the thing. Come to find out, the people who burned the police station down in the first instance, they're part of a right-wing extremist group. And now you have people coming in from out of state and people with guns trying to defend property when this was already set up. Yeah, like th- this is this is like legitimate, and this is something that has really upset me. That the news they haven't talked about, and they haven't. I never heard bungalow one time. I thought that was a dance move. If I'm being honest, bungalow isn't that like a bed? Bungalow, bungalow boy, some bullshit, <laughs> some dumb shit. But legit, <laughs> legit, like the guys who got arrested for it, they are members of this group. Mm-hmm. Should and, be called terrorists. But no, legit terrorists. Mm-hmm. Actual terrorists. And I was like, you got the president, like, oh, it's Antifa, this, Antifa, that. Like, and, and Antifa means anti fascist. And f- turns out it wasn't anyone who was part of that group who fucking did this. But then you got people coming in a month later, killing people for potentially damaging stuff. Yeah. Like, these are. <laughs> These are opportunities to start a civil fucking war. For what? For what? Why? Yeah, you're Who, right. No, legit. For what? Legit. Like, it's like, I really think about it. Like, this kid, Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> and this other thing that's so crazy about COVID, man. It's like, this dude, he might have been in school and shot up his whole school and some bullshit, but guess what? Whoa, there was no, no school one, to go no to. I thought about that. You're right. I, I, I think people did. It just, it doesn't really... Click because so many things have happened in such a short span of time. It's so hard, so very hard Mm -hmm. for people to comprehend and understand what they're going through because it is a whirlwind. And I think that is why so many people, they are upset, they're scared, they're confused, they're depressed. Mm -hmm. Like suicides are through the fucking roof right now. Makes sense. Suicides already double, they were already double the rate of homicides in this country. Mm-hmm. It's like quadrupled at this point. People are, people are off themselves left and right and something else we're not talking about. Insane. No, it's scary. 
So with the rise of Facebook Live, Instagram Live, and the the cops having body cameras, mm-hmm. do you think that we're seeing police brutality, men working a job that's extremely difficult? It's I mean, it, it's a hard job. You know, there's there's we gotta say that. Or is it a, a combination of both? Do you think, you know, are we seeing that men working a hard job? Or are we seeing them, you know, me, uh, exposing them? Let me put this down. <laughs> um, <sighs> I'm just going to say this and just let it be known. All cops are bastards. Okay. And let it Elaborate. be known. Elaborate. Legit. If you're a part of a system where you know it's broken, mm-hmm. we are seeing people being harmed and not helped and not being protected. And that's the whole goal of your job. It's the entire goal. And people are like, oh, it's a few bad apples in the bunch. Well, guess what? If a company actually has some bad apples that kill people, they'd recall all that shit. Yeah, you're right. That's a good way of putting it. But it's not a good way to put that. Some how of it, the eggs are bad at the grocery store. That's how it fucking works. You gotta recall all of them. But yeah. yet, but yet, but yet, we keep saying it's okay for these people to go and do their jobs because they're hard and completely have complete disrespect for the people who are supposed to protect and the law. Yeah. And that's fucking bullshit. Exactly. No, it is, it, it's fucking bullshit. It's, but this has been going on for forever. It's just now that everyone's been able to see it. Mm-hmm. Like, we, we can't stand for people who we pay our tax dollars. Like, you got a job, right? Mm-hmm. Like, everyone here has a job, but your tax dollars are going towards people who don't care about the people who are supposed to protect. Yeah. But even outside of that, why the fuck does Akron got, like, a fucking SWAT vehicle tank? What do we need that for? You know. Why, what do we need that for when you got kids who might have to pay to play a sport next year. Or they got to, like, legit, like, you got a, you got a budget where you might have $2 million for a fucking tank, you know, give it to the police station, so again, to kids who actually can actually use it to better and enrich their lives. Yeah. So maybe these goddamn cops don't have to deal with this shit later on. I guess what, Makes now. Makes sense, yeah. Hey, here's a tank, here's some tear gas, go pepper spray and go tear gas some kids during a protest because you feel threatened. That that also happened yeah. in Akron mm-hmm. the same week of the George Floyd protest. Insane, dude. The tear gassing that happened in Akron was worse than it was in Cleveland, and motherfuckers were lighting cars on fire. Shh. APD should be fucking ashamed of themselves. Damn, dude. They should be. But fucking they're not. Way. They don't care because they have their jobs and be held accountable. Mm-hmm. But that's how a lot of police officers feel. And this, this is the thing, like, I, I, I know there are people in my life, your life, who are police officers, and you know what, they may be good people. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure there were good people who were Nazis, too. Yeah. And if you're not willing to step up against something that is so fucking broken, and it's going to keep happening day after day, year after year, century after century. Mm-hmm. No, you're part of the problem. Yeah, you're right. You are a part of the problem. So defund the police, what is that, you know, leading into this question, defund the police, what does that mean to you? Do we defund the police? How, what is the next step for that? Okay, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. When we got school levies that don't get passed and schools lose their funding, do we clamor about that so much? Is that a big deal? No. But yeah, when we say defund the police, we're talking about taking away money that they don't need for fucking tanks for fucking fully automatic weapons yeah how like why 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 are we militarizing our police to serve and protect that doesn't sound like they're serving protecting Mm -hmm. that sounds like they're terrorizing yeah because they know the people they're supposed who may be those criminals most of them ain't got that yeah no one's got that especially not here yeah (laughs) <laughs> hey, we ain't got that. Oh, well, it, it it really bothers me. Yeah. It truly bothers me that we will give so many resources to prevent crime and make sure the streets are safe. Before giving it to the children, the future. Or 
giving it to a social worker who might be to help someone or giving it to a, me a mental health professional who may be to help some of these people who the cops, they aren't equipped to deal with because that is not in their job. Mm -hmm. Like, You're right. That is not in their job I, to I, deal with. I, I, believe, I believe they are overworked and I believe they are dealing with too many things. But the solution is not just keep giving them money. For sure. Because obviously it's not working. Mm -hmm. And how many more innocent people have to die? Before we get to an answer. Because this, this, is, this, is, this is the thing that, that, that really hurts. And I don't, I don't understand like, why people, they still, they still have this appreciation for the police. It's like the police, they kill more people or any police, our American police, or any police station in the entire fucking world. Yeah, time, and, and probably times two. Why? Legit, there was just a terrorist attack that happened in Lyon, in France. A man beheaded three fucking people. That happened in a church. Mm -hmm. They took him alive. Shot this dude in the leg and rabbit apprehend him. We got people dying... Over traffic stops. Yeah. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. How is that possible yeah. besides saying it's okay? It's not okay. It's not okay. You're right. You're so right. Jeez, when you put it like that. that but people, they don't know. They don't understand because they're not told to look outside. They're told to, they're told to just to see America as this crown jewel, this beautiful place. That we're the best. We're number one. The strongest. We're not number one in shit. Nothing. We're number one in COVID cases. Okay. Man, yeah, COVID, COVID it's kings it's out it's here. It's you know what it is. It's the COVID king. Gang, gang. <laughs> out here coughing and shit. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's fucking terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exciting. And things where it actually matters, we are not number one in anything. Yeah, nothing. Except for School, fucked up shit. Yeah, exactly. Army, we got the biggest army budget, right? Yeah, What's yeah, we, we do. What's up? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, ha we have the largest military in the world. Um, Shit, I want to say we've got... I think we've got like nine like uh, navy destroyers, so it was like the big ships you can launch fucking like air. Do you put them in different places? Right, launch aircrafts over. We have two more in the rest of, rest of the world combined. Two more than the rest of the world combined. Yeah, that's fucked. That's scary. No, but this this is like I really think this is why our culture thinks it's okay for people to take other people's lives when it's not necessary, mm -hmm. because that has been the foundation of this country since its so inception. Long. Yeah. So moving forward, um, there's been, you know, during this whole time of shutdown and stuff, we've seen a lot of people breaking down statues and memorials. Mm -hmm. And I personally don't care. No. I mean, A, it's, yeah, I get it. yeah, it's, it's the past. This dude's an old slave owner. I don't give a fuck. I mean, hey, I'm sorry, guys. But w what is your take on that? Because I... Like, for example, the Columbus Day situation. Like, dude, take down his statue, mm -hmm. get rid of his holiday. Dude was shady. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> I'm for get rid of him. I know. And, and like, it, it, like, if you don't care, I get it as well. Like, that, that's for anyone. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these statues, they got put up during the Jim Crow era. This was, like, legit well after these motherfuckers have been dead. Dead. Who cares? What are you putting these up for? Unless you're trying to intimidate, and you're trying to discourage, and you're trying to dehumanize mm -hmm. other people. You're trying to put people in their place. The, these aren't statues. These are totems of your oppression. And they want you to know that. Like, um, That's a good way of putting it. It's a totem of oppression. Man. Yeah. Like legit. Like, what is it? Yeah, these, what these, is this? Most of, these, most of these monuments, they haven't been up for 100 years. They've been up for like fucking 40, 50 years. That's Jim like, Crow. There are, our parents were probably alive when these statues got erected. Yeah. Our parents, 100, they 100% were alive. Insane, man. Totems of your oppression. Let you know where you came from. So crazy, it, it, man. It's, it's truly really sad where we're at right now um, mm -hmm. and the thing that keeps me going is that we know it's sad 
So we have to do better. Yeah. Have we, to. We don't. There's not going to be anything left. Yeah. Yeah. And and tomorrow, you know, everyone's emotions are going to be haywire, man. Yeah. To just get the results. Mm. Someone's going to be happy and someone's going to be upset. You Le- know. Legit. <laughs> That's the thing. Is, this is going to be wild. This is going to air, like, well after. But, like, just, <laughs> no, seriously. um. <sighs> Your friends, your loved ones, let them know you care about them. Because mm-hmm. we don't know where this is actually going. No one does. No one does. And that's terrifying. Yeah, dude. Absolutely terrifying. Insane. We don't know, you know, if if one dude wins, we might be in an awkward situation. If another dude wins, we might be in an awkward situation. We truly are in a rock and a hard place. I, <laughs> I no, 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 no. But you don't. No, 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 no. Well, what do you what do you what do you think? I think we're between <laughs> a rock and like the twin towers falling okay. over. Okay. <laughs> but no, but actually, let's think about it. So with COVID deaths right now, we got the nine eleven happening every two days right now. It's fucked. And what are we what are we doing about it? We've we passed one stimulus check. One. Oopsies. Tw- yeah, twelve hundred bucks. That was how many months ago? What up? Seven. Hey, this. Hey, I, this was bought by Trump tonight. What's up, dog? Yeah, man. Fuck him. <laughs> yeah. So, like, that was seven months ago. Then, uh, then you had like people. A lot of people they did get the uh, the unemployment benefit, which was cool. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people went back to work. A lot of people didn't have the opportunities. They were essential workers. Yeah. So you legit talking about people living off two hundred dollars when we know there's a deadly virus going around. But it's like. You got to go to work, dog. Figure it out. Yeah, figure, figure it out, out, dog. I felt so bad for people who had, like, apartments and stuff because it's, like, I thankfully, I live mm. with my family. But, like, mm-hmm. dude, like, as a landlord, are you supposed to be, like, I need my money? And then as a tenant, like, you're supposed to be, like, dog, how the fuck am I supposed to work, man? If like, we were smart, if we were smart, we would have shut down completely, paid everyone. I mean, everyone to stay the fuck home because what happens if we get two million people die because of this disease like that's gonna hurt the economy just as bad as not being open yeah way worse T- tbh and Jeez. it's like right now we are seeing cases spike in europe again but we also know it's about to be winter yeah it's about to be flu season Makes sense. It's already going to be a bad time to catch an illness. Mm-hmm. And that's why you have countries shutting down again. Because they know how deep and dark and painful this is going to become. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say this right now. Do not be surprised. By January 1st, there's at least half a million U.S. deaths. Do not be surprised. Man, that's sad. You just look at the numbers, do basic math. It's going to happen. Yeah. And say we have a high week where things are We've been inflated. having a high week every day. High day. Damn, dude. Intense. Intense. It, 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 we it, have a 9-11 every two days. Yes. Whew. Yes. In perspective. But it's yeah, so crazy. So, so many people, they don't care. To put on a mask. It's just not even that. Just to, They don't care. Yeah. They don't empathize. They, like, it's... It's not me, so it's not my problem. Sad. How did we become so selfish and have such a lack of empathy? Yeah, truly. Why? Truly, truly. It's 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 sad. It's sad. It's but it's ultimately really disgusting. Mm-hmm. So if you were the leader, Cameron Mitchell is the leader of the free world, or United States. You're the president. You the man. What is our course of action from here? Like, what should we do, you know, you know like... You're out? Yeah, you are the leader, <laughs> so give us a, a, a what we should do moving forward. You have, you have to make a national mass mandate. And even though no one wants to hear it, no one wants to be a part of it, you have to shut down. Mm-hmm. You have to. So first being 1,000% the mass mandate. Absolutely. That's your first... Uh, you get on no, the podium, I, that's honest, the first thing you honestly, say. Honestly, I think they should go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like legit mass mandate... But we have to shut down. Like, what's about to happen in December? 
in January, especially if it gets cold. If it really does get cold. Like, and this thing, we were really fortunate, especially up here last, last season. Mm-hmm. We had a beautiful winter. Yeah. It was cool. It was, it was cool. Chill. Not bad. Not bad at all. And I definitely feel like it's going to be one of those years, too, where winter's real. We just oh, had snow yesterday. My whole thing, this whole year's been shit, so I expect more shit to happen. <laughs> yeah, I heard that, mm. dude. Um, I'm, I'm just ready to see a better future for ourselves and for whoever is after us. Mm-hmm. If we make it that far. If we make it that far. Um. Yeah, I think these are real conversations that we all actually do need to have. Because mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think people understand how easy it is for you to have something and everything just goes to shit and disappears. I mean, I really feel like a lot of people don't know what it really means to have loss and just, just especially like paying attention to what our life was like, especially when we were little kids and like after 9-11, how everything did change. Mm -hmm. Everything got really, really different. I remember like things not being as fun because people were scared. But imagine what it was like for those kids who lived like in Iraq and Afghanistan, like when bombs getting dropped on them and they're going through shit. And it really, really sucks and pains me to say it but it's like oh shit look what came the fuck back around yeah hell yeah well thank you very much for uh coming on the show today cameron we had an amazing talk some good ass food uh word one more time where can the uh listeners find you on social media you can find me on twitter at collective mind p and you can find me on instagram at Collective Mind Project. Got it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for tuning into the High Garden Podcast. Uh, have a great evening. Hey,